Gadika Sutta, Simuta Nikaya, 4.23, with Gadika. So I have heard. At one time, the Buddha was staying near Rajaga, in the bamboo grove, the squirrel's feeding ground. Now, at that time, Venerable Gadika, meditating diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. But then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a second time, Venerable Gadika, meditating, diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. But then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a third time, Venerable Gadika, meditating, diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. But then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a fourth time, Venerable Gadika, meditating, diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. But then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a fifth time, Venerable Gadika, meditating, diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. But then he fell away from that temporary freedom of heart. For a sixth time, Venerable Gadika experienced temporary freedom of heart. But for a sixth time, he fell away from it. For a seventh time, Venerable Gadika, meditating diligent, keen, and resolute, experienced temporary freedom of heart. Then he thought, I fall away from this temporary freedom of heart no less than six times. Why don't I slit my wrists? And then Mara the Wicked, knowing what Gadika was thinking, went up to the Buddha and addressed him in verse, O oh, great hero, O oh, greatly wise, shining with power and glory. You've gone beyond all threats and perils. I bow to your feet, O seer. Great hero, master of death, your disciple longs for death. He's planning for it. Stop him, O light bringer. For how, blessed one, can a disciple of yours, one who loves your teaching, a trainee who hasn't achieved their heart's desire. Take his own life, O renowned one. Now, at that time, Venerable Gadika had already slit his wrists. Then the Buddha, knowing that this was Mara the Wicked, addressed him in verse. This is how the wise act. They don't long for life. Having plucked out craving, root and all, Gadika, is extinguished. Then the Buddha said to the mendicants, come mendicants, let's go to the black rock on the slope of Isigili where Gudika, who came from a good family, slit his wrists. Yes, sir, they replied. Then the Buddha, together with several mendicants, went to the black rock on the slopes of Isigili. The Buddha saw Gudika off in the distance, lying on his cot, having cast off the aggregates. Now, at that time, a cloud of black smoke was moving east, west, north, south, above, below, and in between. Then the Buddha said to the mendicants, Mendicant, do you see that cloud of black smoke moving east? west, north, south, above, below, and in between? Yes, sir. That's Mara the Wicked searching for Gadika's consciousness, wondering, where is Gadika's consciousness established? But since his consciousness is not established, Gadika is extinguished. Then Mara, carrying his arched harp, made from the pale timber of wood apple, went up to the Buddha and addressed him in verse. Above, below, all around, 
in the four quarters and in between. I've been searching without success. Where has that Gadika got to? The Buddha. He was a wise and steadfast sage, a meditator who loved absorption. By day and by night, he applied himself without concern for his life. He defeated the army of death and won't return for any future life. Having plucked out craving, root in all, Gadika is extinguished. So stricken with sorrow that his harp dropped from his armpit, that spirit downcast vanished right there. <laughs>